Stephen out of Davidson. Here's Curry on the drive. Curry, the future Hall of Famer, extends the arm, missed the layup. Smart on the ground with the rebound. Outlet Brogdon with 6.19 to go. Celtics down eight. Find Smart blowing into the front court against Curry. Spins down the lane. Pass outside. Brogdon, good look at a three. And he drills it. 97-92. Celtics down five. Timeout, Golden State. The Celtics needed something to go their way, and that's exactly what they got. The three from Brogdon. They've struggled from beyond the three-point arc, but none bigger than that one, causing Steve Kerr to call the timeout. 14 points, seven boards from Malcolm Brogdon, and with 6-10 to go, Golden State's lead down to five. 97-92 over Boston. This is the NBA on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. This is Greeny with Mike Greenberg. As I reach the walkway, someone is walking towards me. It was Paul freaking McCartney. And I did the worst thing I've ever done in my life. Oh, God. I looked over at our section of the pool and yelled to Stace to look over and see what was going on. Thankfully, I didn't yell, hey, Paul McCartney is standing right here, but I may as well have. Everyone at the pool, 50 people, oh. look up, and he's kind of got to walk away fast, and the people who he is with oh. are staring at me with exactly the disdain that I deserve. Oh, my God. And I'll tell you, it ruined like two days of my trip. <laughs> Paul McCartney, my idol, my hero. I ruined a Beatles day. Greeny with Mike Greenberg. Weekday mornings at 10 Eastern on ESPN Radio. Plus, you can watch and listen on the ESPN app. The Dominique Foxworth Show. John Payton interviewing with the Houston Texans. It just hit me in that moment when I saw that. It's like, no, Sean Payton is, these teams aren't interviewing him. He's interviewing teams. He's going around to see who's going to pay him the most and give him the most power. I mean, that's the only reason to go to Houston because you can get a ton of money and the entire organization will work for you. Check out the Dominic Foxworth Show anywhere you get your podcast. Kevin with George, you inside our studio, 6-10 to go in the fourth quarter. Golden State 97 to Boston 92. I want to thank all of you who logged on to our Twitter account at NBA on ESPN Radio, at ESPN Radio, to vote in the auto zone in the zone. Poll question, 46% of you said Steph Curry would be the player to get in the zone. Pretty good choice. Curry's had a good night. He's one of three Warriors with 22. Boston being paced by Jason Tatum's with 23, but he's only 6 of 21 from the floor. Five-point game. Back for the final six in Boston with Corey Alexander. Here's Mark Kester, sir. All right, Kev, and that seven-game win streak on the line. Six straight home wins. Crowd trying to pump up the team that has Jalen Brown, Malcolm Brogdon, Marcus Smart, Jason Tatum, and Al Horford in Kelly Green. This would be a great win for either of these teams. For the Celtics to not play well and be able to get one, and more importantly for the Warriors to come get one in a hostile environment. Jordan Poole brings it across for the Warriors. Finds Draymond Green in the circle. Back to Poole. Did not have a good hold on it, but got fouled in a whistle. It's going to be on Brogdon at 5.57 to go here in the fourth quarter. Four team fouls against Boston here in this fourth quarter. Brogdon will pick up his second. Warriors will inbound from the left. Into green, pass back to Poole, didn't get to him. Stolen by Jalen Brown, drives and hammers it home with the right hand. The lead is down to three. Fifteen turnovers for the Warriors tonight. We've talked about all the miscues by Boston. That's 15 for Golden State, and the crowd is getting loud. Here's Curry behind the screen. Steps beyond the arc, shoots the three. It's a miss. Tatum the rebound. Five and a half to go, down three. Brown driving underneath Draymond Green, outside to Tatum. Steadies with a dribble between the legs. Now swings it left side to Smart, 520 to go. Smart bouncing it for Tatum, was knocked off balance before the shot. And the foul is going to be against Steven Chenzo, and they're over the limit. Two free throws for Tatum coming. But the recognition by Tatum to back the basketball, see, I've got Wiggins. I may not have an advantage here. Swing it, and then go set the screen and roll to be able to get Steven Chenzo on him, knowing that Smart will give him the basketball opportunity in the post, getting to the free throw line. Big, deep breath for Jason Tatum, who's perfect at the line tonight and remains so, hitting the first nine of nine. One more. 
They were once down 10. Chance to make this a one-point game. They were down 11, actually. The Warriors had an 11. They'll outlet Curry to half court. Steph bounces it for DiVincenzo. Looked to pass. Couldn't get it to pool. Outside Wiggins. Right side green. 4.38 to go. Warriors lead is down to one. Pass to Wiggins. Nine to shoot. Wiggins at the top. Falling about a shot. Gives to Green. He'll try a three and he'll make it. Draymond Green with a three-pointer and a few words for the Celtics bench. And Draymond had that exact same shot about 10 seconds prior. Did not take it, but knowing the shot clock going down, knocked down a huge three. Ends a three-and-a-half-minute scoreless drought for Boston as well. They swing a pass to the top. Horford had a tip by DiVincenzo, but Brown keeps. Into the corner, Horford for three. No, long rebound, Curry. Rather, Poole has it for the Warriors with four minutes to go. Four-point lead, quickly into the front court. Green trying to get it to Curry Camp. They go to Wiggins and now into the hands of Jordan Poole. Poole against Jalen Brown. Takes him off the bounce to the right. Stops in the mid-post. Wheels, fires short. No! Rebounded by Horford. The Celtics right now try to find a way to get Jason Tatum in the post area with Steph Curry guarding. Tatum stops on a dime, steps back, and drills the medium-range J. Boston with him, too. And Joe Mazzulla wanted Tatum to be able to attack on the last possession, telling his team to open the floor up. Clay Thompson waiting at the scorer's table, but play hasn't stopped. They rise to their feet at the Garden. Wiggins at the top. Wiggins on the drive. Layup blocked by Horford. Down two, here come the Celtics, stolen by Poole at half court, and he flushes home with two hands. A steal and a score by Jordan Poole. And a lazy pass by Jason Tatum. Jordan Poole read it perfectly, and that's a big play with the Celtics having a chance to tie the game. Now down four. Big four-point swing, 2.53 to go. Smart at the top, shot clock at 10. Smart stops the dribble, gives to Tatum, Curry defending, takes him off the bounce, drives into Green, shot up, around, and falls out. Rebound, Draymond. Steph will bring it up, but Golden State up four. Pass to DiVincenzo, leaves it for Green. Now to Curry, fading corner three, no. Rebound, Brown. Curry ended up on the Boston bench. Here's Jalen Brown the other way. They swing it around to Tatum into the corner. Brogdon, his three, no good. Rebound tipped in the air. It's loose. It goes off the body and out of bounds on the far side. They'll say last touch by the Warriors. 2.19 to go. And nobody's sitting down right now at TD Garden here in Boston. Steve Kerr is going to call for a timeout here. That'll allow Clay Thompson to get into the game. Golden State 102. Boston 98, Mark Kestisher, Corey Alexander with you from TD Garden in Boston. And our attendance tracker, tonight's attendance, another sellout at the Garden, 19,156, brought to you by Vivid Seats, where you earn rewards with every purchase. Vivid Seats Rewards is your ticket to more tickets. Vivid Seats, life happens live from the fans at Chase Center in San Francisco. Walked out of there happy on December 10th, getting to uh, see the Celtics team. And we got a challenge here. Steve Kerr took a timeout, I think, to challenge who last touched the ball out of bounds. And the Celtics fans, to finish that thought, are certainly enjoying uh, the hard-earned money they spent here tonight. We'll see if they can get a win. All right, we're watching the replay. It looked like it went off of Poole's foot, and then it looked like it went right through the legs of Jalen Brown. I don't think it touched Brown. Yeah, I don't think it touched Brown at all. The basketball doesn't change its trajectory on the way out. So Jordan Poole going off of his foot. And then Jalen Brown coming into the action. Whoa, Whoa wait a minute. We now got a reverse oh. angle. Did that hit the inside yeah, left foot of Jalen Brown? Yeah, it looks like that did hit. And you know who has that perfect reverse angle look was Steve Kerr on the Warriors bench. He had a great look at it. So from his side, you know, he is seeing that ball hit the inside left foot of Jalen Brown. To the angle we're looking at there, you can't tell. But this angle... And I know, of course, our listeners at home can't see it. That ball changed directions. But it does change directions. Yeah, that Jaylen does Brown. change. Jalen Brown's left leg on the way out. That is going That's going to be a successful challenge for Steve Kerr. And the Warriors are going to get the basketball back. And we talked about what the Warriors had a, I'm sorry, the Celtics had a chance to tie or take a lead down to the rebound. Jason Tatum coming down the floor to cross court pass. Jordan Poole picking it off and dunking it home. And now an opportunity for the Warriors to extend this lead to six, maybe even seven, getting the basketball back after this review. 
David Guthrie, lead official tonight, still has the headset on, working in concert with the folks in Secaucus at the Replay Center, where they have multiple upon multiple of cameras here inside of all the NBA arenas. Not sure they could say the same thing in Paris earlier today, but certainly in all 30 NBA arenas, they've got we've got two looks here. Maybe a third we're seeing now. That third look, I'm not sure if it hit the foot. It hits the toes. But you can see the ball. That's what you're yeah. looking for too. Yeah. Is if if the rotation changes. Yes. If it did, it's ever so slight. Successful challenge, says David Guthrie. So there you go. They'll keep the timeout. So they'll put another timeout on the board for Golden State, still with two. And most importantly, as you mentioned, Corey Alexander, possession with a four-point lead and 2.19 to go. Jordan Poole just went to Steve Kerr and said, did you challenge that? <laughs> and then so when Steve Kerr says yes, he hit him with the let's go, cheering his coach on for, man, for the successful challenge. He's like, hey, I got nine championships, five as a player, four as a coach. I know some things. 102-98, Warriors lead the Celtics, coming up on two minutes to go in regulation. Curry pulls the string, long three, front rim, no. Tapped out by Wiggins to Boston, though. Cross-court pass, Tatum flushes on a beautiful feed for Marcus Smart. Two-point game, Boston down. 29 for Jason Tatum. Minute 50 to go, foul on top as... No basket for Curry. The foul happened as Draymond Green was getting rid of it. It'll be on Marcus Smart up high. And that is only their fourth team foul this quarter. Love the respect between Smart and Draymond Green. Marcus Smart reaching out a hand, and Draymond Green actually accepting his hand to be able to help him up. That was a big time collision. Inbound to Curry, over to Clay Thompson on the left. Minute 48 to go. Bounces it into the post to Green. Passes to the cutting Thompson layup. Hugs the rim and goes down. He's got 24. The cut, the pass, again, textbook, give-and-go basketball between Draymond and Clay at crunch time. Eight assists for Draymond Green. Four-point lead. Pass to the corner. Hoard for three. It's good. Draymond Green was closing out fast. Couldn't get there in time. The sixth assist for Jason Tatum to go along with 17 rebounds and 29 points in a game where he struggled. Warriors lead down to one. Pull rejected at the rim by Horford. Boston can take the lead, but Tatum pickpocketed from behind. Andrew Wiggins making another huge defensive play. 1-10 to go. Steph Curry trying to steady the Warriors. We're going to go over 500 and win back-to-back -back road games for the first time this year. Curry peeks at the clock, nine to shoot. Pass to Draymond in the paint. Outside to pull. In the corner, Wiggins open three on its way. No. Rebounded by Brown with 50 seconds to go. Boston trailing 104 to 103. Jason Tatum on top with 29 points against Curry. Curry will let him go left. Pass to the corner, smart. Back to Tatum, 10 to shoot. Tatum. With Curry in his face, pass cross court, stolen by Poole. Up ahead to Curry, who wisely peels off with 33 seconds to go. Three crucial turnovers for Jason Tatum. Smart tried to foul. Curry gets away and darts right to the basket and scores. Nobody fouled Curry and nobody picked him up. Big basket, three-point lead with 24 seconds to go. Here's Smart at the top. Finds Brown, right wing for three. It's good. Jalen Brown with a triple, ties the game with 18 seconds left. Steph Curry with the shot clock off. On the parquet floor, he won a championship last summer. A chance at a game winner. Tied at 106, six seconds to go. Curry behind the back. Curry fades, fires the three off the glass. No, rebounded by Boston, and we're going to overtime at the Garden. Free basketball, the way it should be in this finals rematch. Well, wow. We're having so much fun here. Who wants to go home? After this and everything that we've seen, both teams making plays to put themselves in a position to play extra basketball. Are they checking to see if there's time on the clock here? Al Horford was signaling for a timeout. All right. So they'll review. We're going to watch. There should be time remaining. Maybe point four even. Jalen Brown gets the rebound. Al Horford is immediately calling for a timeout. We're watching Curry fade. Fire with two seconds. Missed it off the rim with 1.2. 
Al's calling for time was their possession. There was possession by Jalen Brown at that point. I believe we should have point four remaining. So if this goes to point four, you can catch and shoot. And since they have two timeouts, they could advance the ball. So we are, we're not going to overtime just yet if the officials see it the way we're seeing it right now. Well, again, if, if the overtime is granted, they can immediately advance the basketball off of the Horford timeout. So because, again, Jalen Brown goes over as soon as he gets possession, Al Horford has his hands in the air signaling for that timeout. So there was no advancement of the basketball during that stretch. Mark Kestisher, Corey Alexander with you from TD Garden in Boston, where the Celtics and the Warriors are deadlocked at 106. Jason Tatum, 29 points, 17 rebounds. Confirmed that Boston called timeout with 0.5 seconds on the game. 0.5 as David Guthrie, and that is... That's a lot of time in the NBA. That's a whole lot of time, especially when you've got guys like Al Horford and Robert Williams, who you can throw the basketball to the rim. I'm surprised Joe Mazzulla not putting Williams in the game to just be a lob threat. So we thought perhaps we were going to overtime. Instead, half a second to go. Jalen Brown's three-pointer tied the game at 106. Steph Curry missed a three, and Al Horford ever the grizzled veteran heads up calling timeout in possession with half a second left and of course in the nba you can advance the ball so there's the timeout taken by boston david guthrie says so that gives joe Missoula the option to advance and the celtics seven game win streak they were down as many as 11 points in the second half they have rallied to tie the game and may win it here in regulation. And Steve Kerr is going to put out his best defensive unit now. Kevon Looney is in. Draymond Green is coming in. Would guess that Thompson and Curry as well. And Andrew Wiggins on the floor. Nope, DiVincenzo's out there because Clay's playing with five fouls. They may need him for overtime if we get that far. And Steph Curry. But it'll be Brogdon to trigger. Tatum setting up in the dunker spot. Jalen Brown, opposite corner three. Marcus Smart also on the floor with Al Horford. And no one guarding Brogdon on the ball to distract the pass. Brogdon's handed the ball. Half a second to go in a tied game. Brogdon palming, finds Brown, turns, fires. No, they said he didn't get it off in time. It hit the side rim anyway. And indeed, we are going to overtime here in Boston. And Kesty, although point five is allowable to catch and shoot, you have to be Steph Curry. And that's the only person that can get a shot off in point five. So when you think about that, Shocking that Joe Mazzulla didn't put Robert Williams in the game. Throw the basketball to the rim to see if they could just get a, a lob, some type of some tip and shot. Even with Marcus Smart against Steph Curry, I would have thrown the ball up on that one and taken my chances. Corey, that's a great point because in the modern NBA, so much comes off the curling motion, and you've got to catch and square and shoot as opposed to old school just catch and shoot, bang, bang. You know, and again, point five, and it, 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 legally you have to have point four to be able to catch and shoot. But very difficult. There's probably one guy, maybe two in the NBA that had that quick of a trigger, especially to be able to, as you mentioned, to catch it on the move and do so. So we're going to overtime. Big comeback by the Celtics. Just to update everybody on the standings coming in, the Celtics 33-12, and 12, best record in the NBA. Winners of seven straight. They've given themselves a little distance now ahead of Milwaukee, Philadelphia, and Brooklyn. Cavaliers are five and a half back. Cleveland's having a great year. Donovan Mitchell's first season out there, 10 over 500. That's where the Warriors are headed tomorrow night, back end of a back-to-back. And in the West, the Warriors just out of the top six right now, actually tied with Utah for the sixth position. Denver and Memphis right now, the two teams to catch in the West. I mean, Jokic is unbelievable what he's doing as a two-time reigning MVP. And the only reason Memphis only half came out because they won 11 straight. Yeah, Memphis is playing great basketball. Denver, of course, Jokic and getting Jamal Murray back. Jamal Murray healthy and starting to become that guy that we saw a couple years ago getting the job done in the bubble. They are going to be a tough out when you talk about playoff action. But I like Memphis in the West simply because of how great they are defensively. I think yes. that is the key. I do like Memphis in the West, but I'll tell you, if the Golden State Warriors get healthy and they're whole, 
It's hard to count out Steph Curry and the four-time champions of Clay Thompson and Draymond Green, and you throw Kevon Looney in the mix. And, of course, when you got Steve Kerr on the sideline, that never hurts. And we got just under a half season to go. We'll have it for you all season long here on the NBA on ESPN Radio. In fact, we're back here in Boston next week, our next game. The Knicks will take on the Celtics 7 Eastern time. Kevin Winter will have our NBA countdown show. But for the second straight Thursday, we've got overtime. And this overtime period is brought to you by AutoZone. Get in the zone, AutoZone. In fact, I was just telling Corey when... The Celtics were down 11. I said, we had two overtimes last week, so I'll, I'll take credit for that. You, you absolutely <laughs> will take credit for it. I'll give you all the credit, but I'm, and I'm okay with it because of who we have on the floor and what we've seen thus far. Robert Williams wins the tap, and the Celtics going left to right to open OT. Smart will go to Tatum. Tatum fires the pass down low to Williams. Outside corner, Smart. Marcus drives into the lane. Wiggins all over him, gets the jumper off, and rattles home for the early overtime lead. Marcus Smart, 18 points tonight. 108 106. First lead since 54 52 for Boston. Here's Poole. Took an extra step. Wide open three. Missed out of the corner. And Tatum snags his 18th rebound. Wow. Yeah, J- Jason Tatum may have a 30 20 game before it's all said and done in a game that he struggled in. 4 15 to go in overtime. Tatum against Wiggins, high above the three-point line. Now trying to accelerate, spins into two-point territory. Pass in the corner to Brogdon, five to shoot. Malcolm on the run, pass to Brown, into the lane with two. Puts it up over Curry and scores. Boston by four. The Celtics have started out overtime the way they started the game. Points in the paint where they were dominant early. Golden State looking for his first points of OT. Here's Curry driving under the basket. Finds Wiggins on the angle right, finds an open green down low. He's fouled as Brown came to defend him in the restricted area. And he'll put Draymond Green at the free throw line. Love the conversation right now. Jalen Brown frustrated because Draymond Green was left wide open under the basket. Robert Williams immediately going over to him and telling him why Draymond was open because he switched out on to Steph Curry. Free throw good for Draymond Green. Warriors down three. In case you're wondering, uh, for Jason Tatum, this is a season high for rebounds. And now a career high. His previous career high was 16. He's up to 18 as Draymond Green hits two free throws, quiets the crowd. Warriors within two, 340 left in overtime. If Jason Tatum and the Celtics don't win this game, it will not be a memorable night for him. The three turnovers late. Curry is smart, out on the wing against Wiggins, trying to work to the paint, gets there, flips it up, no, it's short. Jalen Brown comes up with it, turns, misses the 10-footer, and a loose ball foul against Golden State on the rebound. I think it's on Draymond, it is. That's number four on Draymond Green, 323 left in OT. But that is because of the pressure that Robert Williams puts on the offensive glass to try to keep him away a live body put so much pressure on a smaller draymond green to try to keep him away from coming up with second chance points well horford comes in for mr williams big smile on his face as he heads to the celtic bench inbound to malcolm brogdon nine to shoot 315 to go and a foul off the ball as curry was guarding smart up high foul on steph curry at 318 to go here in overtime Second team foul in overtime. That's all you get in OT. 317 to go in the extra session. Inbound to Brogdon. Malcolm a couple of dribbles. Gives it up to Tatum. Swings it in the corner. Gets it back. Tatum against Wiggins. Out on the perimeter. With a left-hand dribble. Goes to the right. Steps to his left. End of the shot clock. Three goes high off the rim. No good. And Curry able to fight for the rebound. Step to Poole on the right. Jordan Poole back to Curry, guarded tightly by Jalen Brown. 2.52 left in OT, Warriors down two. Here's Curry getting to the free throw line, into the lane, to the corner, Poole with 10. Up high, they go to Curry. Curry angled, shot is good. It's a triple for the lead from Steph Curry, halfway through overtime. Constant motion. (laughs) He never stops running. The conditioning level for Steph Curry to be able to do this in overtime off the charts 27 for curry here's brown driving into the lane puts up a tough one and scores it over thompson who's playing with those five fouls boston back in front by one and steve kerr calls for time it took Jalen brown the entire regulations to find a rhythm 
but he found it here in overtime as he continues to be aggressive attacking the basket. Jason Tatum, 29 points, 18 rebounds, 6 assists. Boston 112, Golden State 111, 223 to go. And while the teams talk it over here in overtime, we're going to pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the NBA on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Mark Estesher, Corey Alexander, our entire ESPN radio crew, Mike Martino, our producer, Doug Lane, our engineer, Kevin Winter manning things back in the studio. We're in overtime, Boston 112, Golden State 111, 223 to go, and you pointed it out, Tatum had a horrific start to this game, like for almost three quarters, and right now he might be carrying this team toward the finish line in OT. He absolutely may be, and again, a night where you struggle to shoot the basketball, Jason Tatum has shown that he's not just a scorer anymore. He has helped his team on the glass. He's distributed the basketball, and he's gotten to the free throw line, a perfect 10 of 10 from the free throw line. And even though he's 8 for 26 from the field, still 29 points with the 18 rebounds, as you mentioned earlier, a career high is where he's really been effective in this game. And so that means for the first time in Jason Tatum's career, he's had a 25-point 15 rebound, five assist game, hitting those markers. Here's Wiggins accelerating down the lane, swings it out. Oh, and Clay Thompson couldn't hang on. Just that little drive and drift, and he couldn't hang on to the pass, turning it over. But Steve Kerr is an absolute master of ATOs. After timeout plays, that was awesome. Love the design, the execution just a little bit off. 16 Warrior turnovers. Boston by one. Two minutes to go in overtime. Brown to the corner. Horford's open for three. And he connects. Al Horford with the triple. Celts by four. Under two minutes to go in overtime. Curry gives it up to Green. Right back to Curry in the left corner. Dribbling on the sideline. Curry can't get by Horford. Swings it underneath the pool. Is blocked. Blocked underneath by Brogdon. Down floor of the Celtics. Tatum to Smart. Minute 40 to go. Skip pass to the corner, Brogdon finds Brown on the left angle. And he's picked by Poole. It's loose. Poole on the deck can't get it. Brown's got a 10 to shoot. Four-point Boston lead. Here's Tatum launching for three and hitting. Jason Tatum, 32, 19, and 6. And Boston goes up seven in overtime. What a game for Tatum. Here's Curry on the drive, puts up a shot, no good, a whistle and a foul against the Celtics will put Curry to the line. But Jason Tatum has lit this building ablaze tonight. Cassie, this is an MVP level performance because you've done more than score. Even though he has 32 points, that's not where his effect has been made on this game. It's been defensively. It's been rebounding basketball. It's been playmaking. And most importantly, he did not pout. He did not think twice about the fact that he wasn't shooting the basketball well. He stuck to the plan. Remember, Jason Tatum didn't come out in the second half. So he has played the entire second half and overtime of this game and had such an effect on this one. Curry hits the first of two free throws. He's got 28. He's got 29 as he hits the second. Still a two-possession lead for the Celtics. 118-113, minute 16 to go in OT. Tatum gets a screen at half court from Smart. Tatum against Wiggins, runs him through Smart again. Now the pass to Marcus, ball fake on the three. Driving kick to Brown, behind the back escape dribble. Had it knocked away by Clay and a foul on the Warriors. And that's it for Clay Thompson. Tight defense, nearly got it poked away. That's number six on Clay, and he's done for the night. And they're all on their feet. They're all waving bye bye to Mr. Clay Thompson. Last time he was in the building, left with his fourth title. But tonight, a frustrating end for Thompson, who has a few words for David Guthrie before he exits the floor. Jalen Brown will go to the free throw line with 62 seconds to go to try to build on a five-point Boston lead. Brown with 15 points in his return from injury. And the first rattles off. No good. The door's still ajar. I want to give David Guthrie a tremendous amount of credit for keeping his calm <laughs> for the, through the conversations from Clay Thompson, from Jordan Poole, and from Draymond Green, all having conversations with him about that call, telling him it was a bad call. And it was not a bad call. It was a foul. 
As Brown hits one of two, hitting the back end, six-point lead, Boston. 119-113, minute to go. Here's Curry trying to get half back, a three, missed it wide right, and DiVincenzo can't save it, out of bounds. And a chance of air ball is going to come for Steph Curry. Chewing hard on that mouthpiece tonight. And now we'll have to defend Marcus Smart, bringing it across in a six-point game, 50 seconds to go. From down 11, Boston a chance to run the win streak to eight in a row and split the season series. Tatum has it. Tatum against Wiggins. Fouled. He got the jump on Wiggins. A nice quick spin move at the elbow. And now Tatum will go to the free throw line, as you pointed out, Corey, 10 for 10 at the charity stripe tonight. You know what's amazing about his season? This is now the 25th 30-point game for Jason Tatum in 44 games. So... 55% of his games, he has scored over 30 this year. You know, and again, he's always been an elite level scorer. Every stage of the way, of course, I coached against him with, in, in the Nike EYBL, coached against him in high school and had the opportunity to actually coach Jason Tatum in USA basketball. Always could score. But his ability to affect the game without scoring in the other ways is what has put him in the MVP conversation and clearly a first-team All-NBA performer this season. First one good, second one good, 12 for 12 at the line. Timeout, Steve Kerr. Tatum was 14 for 14 at the free throw line Monday in Washington. So as you pointed out, next phase in his game as a player heading toward his prime, getting to the free throw line and got another dozen points there tonight. You know, I, I think he's actually reached the next phase. I don't know that there's any phases left for him to reach. Of course, he can get better at every one of those. But when you think about what the MVPs of this league have done, one, they win. Let's start with that. Well, his team has the best record in the East. They also affect the game in more than just scoring. He's rebounding. He's got the assists. And more importantly, he defends. And when you think about all those things, I mean, this is a game where – Jalen Brown struggled all the way into overtime. He's played great in overtime, but he struggled all the way through. Jason Tatum didn't shoot the basketball well, but every other aspect of the game, he has played well, and he's become such a leader at a very young age. You mentioned not even 25 years old yet. Well, he's given Boston an eight-point lead with 38 seconds to go. And speaking of not even 25 yet, uh, Jason Tatum has now eclipsed 9,000 points in his young career, the 10th player to reach 9,000 before the age of 25 so jason tatum just getting started and what a job to get him as the third pick in the draft that year danny Ainge, magic picking him up and of course danny's now trying to do that in utah in salt lake city maybe the best draft trade of all time but i'll say this also so a number of those guys on that list are in front of him didn't have to play a year in college that's a good point divincenzo will inbound down eight they need quick points wiggins fouled on a three I mean, Horford can't believe it. He was right in the airspace of Wiggins. That's going to be three free throws without the clock moving. So not a good foul for Horford at 36 seconds to go. And if Joe Mazzulla has not used his challenge yet, he's going to use it now. And it is a great challenge because Al Horford's left hand never touches Andrew Wiggins. You hear the crowd reacting. They just saw the replay on the big screen, and now David Cuthery. Austin is challenging and ruling on the floor, but defensive personal foul on Al I believe that this will be a challenge one. And live action from, from our angle, you see Horford reach his hand in the left hand, but he never brings it up with Wiggins. I don't think he touched Wiggins on that shot. I think you're right. He brought both those hands down, went up initially, but was there contact before he brought both hands down behind his waist? Can they have clear and concise video? Because that's really what it would take to overturn it. The call on the floor is a foul against Horford. It absolutely would. And from the angles that we've seen thus far, I don't know that it's clear and concise enough. I don't believe that Al Horford touched him. But... You have to have the video evidence, bar. and I don't know that there's video evidence to be able to really determine whether he did or did not touch him. But Joe Mazzulla, of course, a great challenge anyway because you got 36 and a half seconds remaining in overtime. You might as well challenge this as his teammate, as his team is looking at him, basically saying, "Epic know that right against tonight possession game." 
Five point game. It's a turnover off the inbound. Warriors have it. DiVincenzo, corner three is good. 30 seconds to go, and it's a three point game. Oh, Boston had an eight point lead, a terrible foul, and a turnover, and a near turnover now as Jalen Brown saves it in front of us to Tatum. Steve Kerr says, don't foul. There's six seconds difference on the shot clock. 18 seconds to go. 10 seconds to shoot. Tatum dribbling across the top. Tatum guarded by Wiggins with five. Tatum inside the arc. Swings to Horford with one. Got to get a shot off. Just does it. The horn no good. Tipped out of bounds to Golden State with three seconds to go. Warriors do not have a timeout, so they can't advance it. They're 94 feet away, trailing by three. Where's Steph Curry? That's always the question. He's standing at the free throw line to our left. The inbound will come from our left. Three seconds to go. DiVincenzo to trigger. Into pool. Pool with two. Pool with one. Runner from half court. Off the window. No good. Celtics hang on. They beat the Warriors in overtime. 121-118 and split the season series in the finals rematch from a year ago.